Welcome to Food Exposed, where each week we take an inside look at what's on your plate. My name is Jackie Keller, and I'm the founding director of NutriFit. We're Los Angeles' premier healthy food company, and today we're talking about a universal subject that people all over the world have in common. We're talking about denim, how to look good, and your genes is a topic that millions of people worldwide face. We practically live in denims. About 450 million pairs of jeans are sold in the USA alone each year. Did you know that on the average, every American owns about seven pairs of jeans? So if you own them or like the way they look, listen in. Here are some little known denim facts. First of all, it takes about two pounds of cotton to make a single pair of jeans. And denim is currently a 12 billion dollar a year industry. Traditionally, denim is made with blue and white threads sort of woven together. The blue fibers are usually more densely packed, which makes the material predominantly blue. Then are, they're woven together to strengthen the material and they're dyed with indigo. In the 1930s, Levi Strauss sewed a small red flag next to one of the pockets on his jeans, and that became the very first label to be placed on an article of clothing. Designer denim was first introduced in the 1980s. So let's face it, just because you can zip them up doesn't mean they fit you. And there are really two issues when it comes to finding the best pair of jeans for your figure. The first, finding a pair that fits you, and then finding a pair that flatters you. My guest today is an expert in both of those things. In fact, she's a high-end denim designer and an expert in denim fashion. A loyal friend of mine personally and of NutriFit, Kirsten Knuckles. Kirsten, welcome to Food Exposed. Thank, Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Jackie. You know, I know you worked for Page Denim for Ernst uh, Sohn for Textile Elizabeth and James, and most recently for Hudson. And you've been involved in the world of fashion for, it's hard to believe, 20 years. You're the mom of two great kids, and you're an avid triathlete. How do you balance all of that? <laughs> <laughs> How do you do it? That's a challenge every day, every day. It's lots of balls in the air and uh, just prioritizing. Okay. So where did denim come in? I mean, how did you get involved in the world of fashion? Uh, gosh, I was 18 when I started in the garment industry and started actually in t-shirts and just sort of evolved and uh, landed a job doing denim about 10 years ago. And it's stuck and there forevermore. Oh. So, so what's the secret? I mean, how do you find a great pair of denims that actually fit you? I think the number one thing is you don't get hung up on size. I think you, a lot of women get nervous about, okay, I need to be a 26 or I need to be a 27. In my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I think the number one thing is you find a pair that looks good on you. That's the number one thing. You forget the size, find the fit that looks good on you. Some women look good in skinnies, some women look good in flares, some women look good in boots. Generally, I would say most women though, as though it's not the most fashionable thing right now, but the most flattering is a boot cut. Uh, okay. Well, since we're all about health and nutrition here on Food Exposed, you know, are there certain types of messages that certain kinds of genes convey? I know, you know, there are, are they, they, they at one time, they were a big social statement. I mean, jeans were sort of how you expressed yourself. Um, are they still that way like they used to be in the 60s and the 70s? I think now denim is just the staple of our wardrobe. It's acceptable anywhere. Uh, dressed up, dressed down, light, dark, holes, no holes. I think it's a self-expression of how you feel on any given day and what pair of jeans you put on that makes you feel good. So what should we know about the different kinds of jean fabric? I would say there's basically two kinds of jean fabric. There's rigid and there is stretch. Um, I'm a true denim girl, so I love my rigids. But I would say as far as fit and flattering, you definitely go for stretch. Comfort, versatility, wearability. Okay. Yeah. So where did that expression skinny jeans come from? Because you know we all talk about looking great in your skinny jeans and, and where did that come from? What's, what's hot in the world of denim today? 
Well, skinny is still hot, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think skinny's ever going away. Um, can a big right, person wear skinny jeans? Yes, a big person can wear skinny jeans. As long as you balance out your top with the skinny, if you have, a, if you have more hips, if you're a little fuller in the thigh, if you wear a top that's a little looser, you can definitely wear your skinny jeans. I would say keep it a dark wash, a clean wash. Um, you want to elongate the lines of your body. Um, but yes, I think anybody can wear skinny jeans as long as it's the right size and the right fit. Now, are certain colors in, certain colors out? What about color? And I think anything goes right now. I think that across the board in fashion, everybody's just looking for um, something new. So I think prints, I think color, I think light washes, dark washes, boyfriend, destructed, everything and anything goes right now. Boy, you're already using terms I don't know, like destructed and, and boyfriend. What does that mean? Um, boyfriend is generally like a slouchy or baggy fit. Oh, um, so you're wearing your boyfriend's pants. Exactly, your boyfriend's denim. Um, and then destructed means holes. Okay. All right, all right. So speaking of color, we were talking before about indigo being uh, the main color in denim. I thought it would be fun to cook up some uh, great blue foods because denim is blue, right? Right. Right. So, um, you know, uh, how about joining me cooking up some blue foods that will make us all look great in our skinny jeans? Sounds great. Are you good? Yeah. Let's go. You know, this is one of my favorite recipes, Kirsten, because we get to make foods that are blue. And, you know, blue is not necessarily a color that we as humans associate it with healthy food. But, for example, did you know that in the insect world and in the bird world, foods that are blue are an indication of ripeness? Yeah. Didn't in know fact, that. In fact, if you take a blue light and you pass it over a banana, the color that a ripe banana shows under blue light, which birds see, is blue. And that's how it's they amazing. know which bananas to, to, to eat. So anyway, that's a little bit of food trivia. <laughs> I, just, I wanted to make a, a dessert, kind of dessert snack that is healthy, nutritious, and blue. So um, I'm going to need your help. Sure. This is called Apple Blueberry Delight, and it uses fresh apples. So we're going to start with some sliced fresh apples. And I've heated up our pan here. It's kind of hot, so I'm going to put in a little bit of very healthy uh, sh margarine. Now, you know that margarines um, are not always considered healthy, but this is a very healthy brand. It's a Smart Balance brand. And basically... Ooh, What we're going to do is add our sliced apples mm -hmm. to the pan. And I'll let you stir for me okay. while I um, season it up with a little bit of our salt and sugar-free cinnamon spice blend. We know that cinnamon, of course, has wonderful nutritional properties. Very, very healthy. Yes, it does. And um, I'm going to add a little bit of agave, which uh, is a... Um, sweetener that doesn't have the sugary side effects of, um, of sugar or maple syrup, but it has some of that same flavor characteristics. It's like a liquid honey, but without the sugar load. So you can see, starting to smell, smell that cinnamon. It's so healthy. You know, cinnamon actually has been shown to lower blood pressure. So just adding a little cinnamon to something like this actually can bring down your blood pressure. So once you've got that going, we're going to add in a little bit of orange juice and even a little bit of orange zest. So um, I'll go ahead and do that while you continue to stir because we want to get that bright orange flavor. And I like to zest the oranges and then rub them on my hands to take. I love the smell of the oranges and of course that uh, high vitamin C content is really healthy for skin and um, helps us stay fit and healthy and you know well balanced and all that. And then of course our blue food. Blueberries, one of my favorites. Not always available fresh uh, and in season but when they're not you can always use frozen blueberries in this dish. Okay. So very very simple dish. The apples are soft. You can see they're not mushy. They still have nice texture. 
We left the peel on them so that we get that extra fiber in the, in the uh, dish. And then add in the blueberries. I wash them. <laughs> and um, we can bring the heat back up a little bit because what we want is that sizzling uh, dessert. And, you know, this is one of those dishes that you can eat it by itself in the morning with your cereal or just as a fruit, a healthy way to start the day. Or you could take it at night and put it over soft vanilla, uh, low-fat ice cream or vanilla yogurt or something like that, oh, which yum. would be really good, or mix in some Greek yogurt with it. Delicious. So um, what do you think? Sounds good. Does Looks it, great. It smells good, too, doesn't Delicious. it? Delicious. And of course, we want to stop the cooking before the blueberries sort of fall apart on us and, uh, and then give it a taste. So are you ready? I'm ready. You're ready? I'm okay. ready. All right, let's turn this thing down. We'll um, bring the heat down, and we can go ahead and dish up a little bit. And you can see, nice texture. You can still tell what everything is, but we're definitely in the blues here. And uh, there you go. Delicious. I have a fork for you here. Wonderful. It's kind of hot, but maybe you can give it a quick let's, taste. Let's see, see what, what you got think. Here. Careful. Mm. Good. Delicious. Yeah. Well, it's good Delicious. for you. Good for your figure. Good for your skinny jeans. I like right? that. We like that. We like that. We like that. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Kirsten. I really appreciate your sharing your expertise. I know that I definitely, I'm wearing my jeans today, <laughs> and I'm thinking, ah, there's so many questions I want to ask her about jeans and fit and color and fashion and where to buy and what the price point should be. How can people find you? How can they follow you? Um, they can find me at the LALookbook.com. Uh, and on Instagram at uh, the LA Lookbook on Instagram. Great, great. Well, we'll stay connected. And I know that we'll um, all think of you when we go out to buy our next pair of skinny jeans. <laughs> Thank you, Kirsten. Thank you, Jackie. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. No matter how much spiritual practice, self-improvement, or therapy we've been through, there's one area where many of us still find ourselves challenged every day, and that's the area of self-acceptance. It seems all too easy to fall into the trap of judging ourselves as inadequate, finding fault with our achievements or our bodies, and believing our inner critical voices that insist we'll never measure up. Self-respect, it turns out, is not narcissism. Instead, self-respect helps to build the confidence and capacity to create the life you want. And since you're the only person who's been with you from the day you were born and is guaranteed to hang in there with you until the day you die, it might be helpful to practice the art of being a good friend to number one. I read an interesting article in uh, psychology the other day. It was about the dysfunctional relationship that so many women have with their bodies. And it referenced some research on marriage done by doctors John and Julie Gottman. They found that successful marriages generally have a ratio of five to one positive to negative interactions. So what would happen if we actually applied that science to our relationships with our bodies? For every negative thought we have about our bodies, we have to think about five positive things. And for those ladies who reported an average of negative 13 body thoughts a day, that's 65 positive body comments each day. Could you do it? I'll leave you today with this clever, uh, appropriate poem from none other than Dr. Seuss. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction that you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know. You're the guy who will decide where you go. And thanks for joining me today on Food Exposed. Join us next week for another look at what's on your plate. For more Food Exposed, check me out on empowerme.tv. And until next week, remember, make food your best friend and exercise your companion for life.